Arachitangs, no matter where they fall on that spectrum that I showed you, they have their sights on the high value man, not because she wants to build a forever family with him, right? That's not why, but what she wants him for everything that he can provide in the here and now, right? She wants her right now needs met. She wants to shop. Right? She wants clothes. She's got to have her hair done. She must get those nails done. She has a standing appointment at the spa. She needs the yacht trips. She needs to turn up in Miami. She wants her carnal, fleshly, little narcissistic ego just stroke. And she looks to the high value man to help her do it. Remember, a ratchet tanks are empty, they're shallow, they're selfish, they cannot manage their misery, and they bring nothing to the table but headaches and heartaches. Those are ratchet tanks. She sees the external trappings of the high value man. She sees the money because remember, high value men lead with the money. That's what they're known for. And money is the foundation for why they are considered high value men in the first place. That's actually the number one prerequisite to be considered a high value man, according to the prevailing definition. So the Arachitang, she sees his clothes, you know, his influence, his ability to be a mover and a shaker. And hear me, I am not castigating those things. Not at all. I have men in my circle, in my tribe, in my network that are high value men. These are some good brothers. And if a man has worked hard to earn his position in the top 5% of earners, he should be applauded and congratulated for that. But remember, I am a Christian. I am a soldier of scripture. Therefore, my worldview flows from my biblical worldview. And since I stand on the solid foundation of a biblical worldview, I must be on the side of scripture. And I must prioritize what it says is the chief end of man. The, the chief end of man is not to pursue money, but rather it is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. So, well, the high value man, based on the definition, it places God after he's done everything else and has defined who he is and why he's valuable to the world based on the foundation of his assets and his influence, not who or what God has called him to be. But here is what I'm saying. When it comes to building forever families, when it comes to restoring the nuclear, the heteronormative nuclear family, we have to go to the one who authored and instituted the covenant of marriage to begin with. That's where we begin. You guys, I, I can't remember if it was today or last night, but... I was listening to Daryl Bernard Harrison. No, it was yesterday. And he articulated it this way. He, he was talking about how, how humanists, how they think. And I believe that we can apply this to the conversation of rebuilding the nuclear family. He was explaining that when a humanist speaks, or what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take what he was applying in a different context and the analogy, it, it just works, right? So when the humanist speaks of rebuilding the family, it's pretty much like the patient writing out his own prescription. People think that they can somehow fix or repair themselves when they don't even understand what marriage and family is. So why, why would we listen to their anecdotes or their red pill advice? No offense, no offense, but the manosphere does not corner the market on truth. Hello? John 17, 17 says, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Yes, we can appreciate what the manosphere has to say about a lot of things, but remember, their solutions are deficient. If the goal, if the goal is to see and garner the attention of a high value man, honey, 
you are going to be disappointed, okay? The, the institution of family, the institution that we say is being destroyed and nuked right before our very eyes. If we say that families need to be restored, then it needs to be the kinds of families that will be built with the right foundation because everything else is sinking sand. It's deficient. I'm going to keep saying this because I can see that some in the manosphere, they will hear me and then they'll decide that I am trashing or trying to throw shade on Kevin. That is not what this is. Okay, listen, Kevin started a much needed conversation and he brought attention to a matter that I believe no one else was really talking about, especially in a way that Kevin Sanders talked about it. However, my conscience is held captive to the word of God and I must be willing to be respectful yet honest in my assessment and tell the truth. The truth is that the high value man paradigm at face value, it is deficient and it cannot restore the heteronormative nuclear family. Why? Because it places the emphasis on money and status and influence and it stimulates the same kind of coveting and hopium that the false prosperity gospel offered to so many who were held captive by its message. Now, Kevin's not here to defend himself. And honestly, I believe that if I ever had a chance to sit down with him and talk to him, that on some level, he would agree that desiring a high value man, it really is a pipe dream for most women. Like, let's, let's, let's be honest. It's not happening for you, sis. Okay. Just some things you just got to learn to let go. You just got to let go and let God. Isn't that what they say? <laughs> but he would agree. He would agree that the types of women who desire a high value man, they don't even qualify for one. However, because so much, because so much emphasis was placed on the high value man, there was this unhealthy obsession with the idea of being one or being with one by most by both men and women. There was, or should I say, there is, there still is a heavy pursuit by a lot of men to actually darn near kill themselves to be a high value man. And then, then you got a boatload of women willing to do almost anything just to be in the purview of a high value man. But this preoccupation with the high value man is why you can't restore or rebuild or build forever families because the worldview and the scope of the end goal from the outset, it was established with the wrong foundation. It is deficient. I know, I think I've said it like six times now. It is deficient and it won't yield us the result of restoring the family in the long run. It just won't. You guys, marriage and family are fundamentally being destroyed and the average young person, their worldview has been permanently impacted by what they are seeing in the culture today. Just, just think about it. How do you trust a woman like a Tia Maori, right? Like how do you marry a woman like an Ebony Williams? You, can, you can't build a thing with a woman like that because all they will do, they gonna tear down with their own hands, just like the book of Proverbs says. How does a woman submit and follow when she believes that she's better than you and wants to compete with you? It's simply not possible. So the high value man, based on how he has presented himself to the world, he's gonna have to make a decision. Either, either he is going to continue to think of himself as a high value man and then run the risk of losing everything and never building a forever family or, or he can choose to be something better, something, something of substance, right? Like he can choose to be disciplined and discerning 
and distinguished. You guys, he can choose to be a devoted family man. He can choose that instead. Why? Because the devoted family man, this man doesn't need to strive to be placed on the high value man spectrum because his mind, his will, and his emotions and desires, they are governed by scripture and a worldview that teaches him that the highest chief of man is not his wallet or how others see him, but rather who God says he is. Thank you.